A utopia is an ideal urban architecture or society envisioned by human wisdom, which has always been a huge goal that many architects strive to achieve, despite being aware that this is probably an impossible feat. The visibility of having a utopia and its concept has always been constantly questioned and challenged by different people in different times. Therefore, this project aims to analyze the viability of building a utopia by focusing on various case study. Plato's Republic introduced the concept of a utopia in early time. When Thomas More's Utopia was published, over the idea of utopia, there were three critical planners, including Ebenezer Howard, Frank Lloyd Wright, and Le Corbusier. The Garden City Movement is a method of urban planning that was initiated in 1898 by Ebenezer Howard in the United Kingdom. Garden cities were intent to be planned with the utopian concept being self-contained, followed by Le Corbusier's Gradient City. Both of these two projects were not just trying to improve human's lifestyle, but also to create a better society. The similarity of these two projects are the cities were organized in a systematic, symmetrical, and standardized way. Although the Gradient City was deemed unrealistic, it still had an extensive impact on modern housing and topology. Afterward, Le Corbusier was invited by Indian government to take over the Albert Mayor's job, who was the initial planner of the Chandigarh city. The city plan was conceived as post-war garden city, where the vertical and high-rise buildings were ruled out, giving in field the social, economic conditions and living habits of the people. Utopia is also about separation from the past. In order to resolve the independence issue between India and Pakistan, Nigabushi used Chandigarh to revolutionize the urban planning of India instead of building a new capital. This project was seen as an expression of the nation's faith in the future. Nigabushi again divided Chandigarh city into 60 sectors in a grid-like manner just like what he has done in the Gradient City. Each sector has its own function in it. The Gabushia will supply his human biological theory as the fundamental concept for Chenigov City. Sector 1 symbolized as the brain, Sector 17 as heart, while the seven feet circulation in town plan act as bloodstream, the limb system, and the respiratory system act in biology. The three brutalist buildings located in Sector 1 are High Court, Assembly, and Secretariat which served as a headquarter of Chandigarh. This building were built with rough concrete as seen from exterior. In 1960s, the Gabusia student Oscar Nima has done the city planning for Brasilia, again by using the utopian idea. However, it was still considered as a failure, as Nima overemphasized on the architecture instead of the importance of the viability for the city layout. This most utopian experiment was done by John Calhoun with an aim of finding out what will happen in a utopian world. The experiment started with four mice under utopian conditions, with nutrition, housing, and comfort. 300 days later, the population has grown to 2,000 mice, which has also reached the equilibrium period. Some unusual behaviors such as violence, antisocial, homosexual activities became noticeable during the experiment. Cowan believed that this experiment highlighted the similar behaviors that can also be observed in human society, which proves the possibility of turning utopia into dystopia. Dystopia, a society that is undesirable or frightening, inevitably follows utopia since it is destined to fail. Among the few experimental schemes of utopia that can be found in the 20th century, no attempt was successful. Kowloon Ward City was another example of a dystopian society. Kowloon Ward City was a largely ungoverned and densely populated settlement in Kowloon City, Hong Kong. One unique point of Kowloon Ward City was its complicated political problems. Where this place ended up as nobody's jurisdiction, the city of anarchy. Without any monitors, Kowloon Ward City soon became a perfect place for criminals and illegal immigrants to live and hide. Crime organizations took control of the city. Overpopulation became a major problem. Rooms and buildings in it were built illegally by stacking over others. A place turned from perfect into a place filled with crime, poverty, prostitute, gambling, disease, and hunger. Nearly every dystopian society starts with a utopian idea. Kowloon Ward City used to be a place where people can enjoy freedom, equality, a place which was said to be perfect. This perfect place soon turned into a city of darkness, but utopias are destined to fail. Kowloon Ward City was not excluded. In the Lyris, New York, architect Ram Kuhas explained that a city is uncontrollable. Architects should allow the city designed by them to flourish on its own and not attempt to control its fate. It would be wise and humble from them to willingly withdraw from the control of the city. Despite the many failed utopias, people still pursue the dream of creating such a perfect society. It is in human nature to seek perfection, first driving human progress. After reviewing the aforementioned study with regards to a utopia, it is clear that a utopia is unachievable. Conclusively speaking, 
even though achieving a utopia is a dream, people should still strive towards creating their ideal society, concurrently improving the quality of life.